Here we see mycobacterium tuberculosis lymphadenitis or tuberculosis of the lymph node which is characterized by multiple granulomas with caseous necrosis. Uh, here we can see the capsule of the lymph node and here in the periphery we can identify the residual follicles with germinal centers. However, the rest of uh, this lymph node is infiltrated by these granulomas with caseous necrosis inside. It is called caseous necrosis or cheese-like necrosis because it resembles cottage cheese in gross examination. And uh, on higher magnification we can see that there are no nuclei inside of the caseous necrosis. Uh, sometimes we can identify uh, chromatin sprinkle uh, which is made out of destroyed nuclei. So these small blue dots, that's chromatin. Around Cassius necrosis we can see the rim made out of epithelioid cells, which is the hallmark of granulomatous inflammation. Epithelioid cells are large cells with ill-defined cytoplasmic borders uh, containing eosinophilic and large pale ovoid or oval-shaped nuclei. So all of these cells here are epithelioid cells. Uh, they are transformed macrophages that lost phagocytic capacity and this transformation is part of the T-cell mediated reaction and Th1 cells are responsible for production of cytokines that drive this process and we can see those lymphocytes here. Some of the macrophages also fused together and they form these multinucleated giant cells. Here we have one multinucleated giant cells. You can recognize two types. One subtype of multinucleated giant cells um, is when the rim of nuclei is in the periphery of the cytoplasm and it makes this circle. We can call them Langhans cells. And um, the second type is when nuclei are dispersed randomly in the cytoplasm or they are packed in one pole uh, of the cytoplasm and we call these cells foreign body type giant cells because we often see these uh, giant cells in case of foreign body granuloma. Around epithelioid cells we have a rim <coughs> of lymphocytes, typically T cells, and uh, if we go farther here we can see some fibroblasts which produce collagen fibers and these fibroblasts uh, try to wall of the process and contain mycobacteria inside of the granulomas. So these thin pink strands, that's collagen fibers, and these spindle-shaped cells with elongated nuclei, these are fibroblasts. And I would also like to briefly describe pathophysiology of granulomatous inflammation and explain why do we see these structures. Uh, so if we simplify it a little bit we can say that in the lymph node the mycobacterial antigen is exposed via MHC class 2 molecules on the surface of dendritic cells and uh, it is recognized by the T cells. Dendritic cells then produce interleukin 12 which tells uh, the T cell to mature into Th1 helper T cell and Th1 cell produce IL-2 and interferon gamma and activate macrophages and call on additional T cells. Activated macrophages then produce lysosomal enzymes and reactive oxygen species and they destroy everything around them so that's why we see this caseous necrosis. That's the result of activated macrophages. Uh, interferon gamma is also responsible for transformation of macrophages into epithelioid cells, that's what we see here, and the Th1 cells and also other T cells are, are seen here. Uh, we don't actually see mycobacteria in h &E stain, we need to use special stain. Mycobacteria are rod-shaped microbes with waxy cell wall and they are very resistant. Uh, if we stain it the waxy cell wall can retain the stain even if we washed it in the alcohol or acid and therefore uh, it is called acid fast. We commonly use Seal Nielsen stain or Phyte stain. However, the specimen is often negative even when mycobacteria are present. 
so it is useful to do the cultures and it takes quite a long time it's about six weeks to cultivate mycobacteria so we can also use PCR which is a little bit quicker but more expensive and without identification of mycobacteria we cannot diagnose tuberculosis we need to call it just necrotizing granulomatous inflammation because it could be also also something else um, <clears throat> a similar appearance in the lymph node um, has cat scratch disease or tularemia for example okay thanks for watching